Uh, hey everybody, we are going to follow up on the, uh, the blog post from last week, okay? So in case you missed it, it was about uh, cross-training, which is kind of a, uh, a broad term that's thrown around these days. And uh, somebody, somebody had asked me, you know, do you cross-train? Is all you do kettlebells? Do you do cardio or something like that? Um, but the way they phrased it was, do you cross-train, right? So I said, mm, I'm not really sure what that means, you know, can you explain that a little bit more? And they said, um, this person said, well, it means, you know, you do like a spin class one day, and maybe the next day you do uh, cardio, or, or rather you did your cardio on Monday and spin class, and maybe Tuesday you do yoga, and Wednesday maybe you do a dumbbell circuit, and you know, Friday you do a different form of cardio, maybe a treadmill, and Friday you do, uh, a, you know, a body pump barbell class or something like that. So it's cool, and I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I asked because I feel like this person, the way that they were looking at, uh, the lens they were viewing training through is, is pretty common. And um, we, we just look, we look at it a little bit differently first. So this person, I think a lot of people do, is they look at tools first, right? Like, am I doing these things? Like, uh, am I doing yoga? Am I, am I doing dumbbells? But that's, that, I want you to look at it the other way. I want you to look, start at the outcome, right? Start with the end in mind. This is very common uh, advice, right? And most people just want to feel better and look better. So before uh, I worry about what tools I'm going to use, I'm going to worry about what, what am I actually trying to achieve, okay? In this person's life, what am I trying to achieve? I want them to feel better, or rather they want to feel better, and they want to look better. Okay, cool. So, so now that I know what the average Jane and Joe wants to achieve, because that's who I train, uh, I got to decide what are the physical char characteristics or physical traits that I've got to train with them uh, in order to get that outcome, right? So we know that we've got to make them, uh, we've got to train some mobility with them, we've got to do some strength training with them, we've got to do some endurance training with them. So mobility is really, uh, <laughs> it's a pretty broad term, right? It just means essentially that we're going to try and um, undo some of the muscle imbalances you have, make tight muscles, you know, a normal resting length again. We're going to try and make your joints uh, better aligned and more stable in that better alignment. And we want to make, give you uh, better balance, better coordination so that as you're, as you're exercising or moving or going throughout your life, your joints are not only aligned, but they stay aligned and you, and you stay in a good posture as you move, right? So that's, that's mobility. And there's a, you know, a number of different ways you could call it. I'm just calling it mobility for general sake, but there's a number of ways you could do it. You could, you could use yoga. Uh, we use here at the gym uh, the original strength stuff, crawl around, roll around on the ground. Uh, there's the FMS corrective series, which is, you know, kind of derived, I think, a little bit from physical therapy. Uh, but, you know, we, and we use some of that stuff as well. So there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of ways you could do it. Uh, there's a whole gymnastics program for mobilizing your joints and so forth. Um, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. It's just, are you getting the outcome you want? Are you training that physical trait and is it adding to your outcome? That's what we're looking at, right? So, after we've got the mobility going, we have people working on strength. We want people to get stronger. Um, and here's why. Uh, strength is going to, A, add to the quality of your life. It's going to make you feel better because it's going to make you more robust. So starting about 25, 26, 27 years old, you start losing muscle mass a little bit at a time. And it's, it's barely noticeable, if noticeable at all in your in your mid to late twenties, but the process keeps accelerating uh, each decade, right? Your thirties, your forties, your fifties, your sixties, your seventies, and by the time you're in your seventies, um, you've lost a significant amount of your muscle mass if you haven't done anything to combat that, if you haven't done strength training or, or, or maintain a vigorous uh, physical routine to, to keep muscle on your frame, and that's why, uh, you know, unfortunately, falling down and breaking a hip for a 75 or 80 year old is a death sentence because um, they're so frail at that point, they've lost so much muscle mass that they're unable to recover from that. They're, they're no longer robust. So strength training is A, gonna make you feel better because it's gonna make you more robust. It's gonna make you robust longer uh, into your life, into your later years. Uh, and it's also gonna make you feel better, or I'm sorry, look better because the way to change the way your physique looks is by adding muscle mass. And I know that's pretty, um, it's, it's not a popular view, uh, in the, in, especially on the female side of things. A lot of women uh, are, are worried about getting bulky. And I, I, I get that, you don't wanna look like a man. Um, but I, I guess I'm just gonna have to say, trust me on this one, uh, that when you add muscle on your frame, it actually has the opposite effect of how you look and how you're close, but you actually uh, get slimmer. So I'm just gonna say, trust me on that one. 
you know, the internet's a wonderful place. There's a ton of information, ton of misinformation. But if you dig around on women in weight training, you're going to find um, that really uh, the fear isn't, it's not going to happen to you the way you think it is. You're not going to get bulky, right? And so strength training, um, you know, again, it can be done any number of ways. We use kettlebells a lot here. We use barbells. We use body weight, uh, calisthenics, pull-ups and push-ups and so forth. We crawl. Um, we don't have any dumbbells here, but there's nothing wrong with that modality. We just don't have them here. Uh, and there's, again, plenty, plenty of ways to, uh, to get stronger as well. It doesn't really matter how you do it, as long as you're doing something to make yourself stronger and to add some muscle to your frame. So the third uh, physical trait we're looking for is endurance, okay? It's a really broad, uh, vague term, okay? People might call it cardio, they might call it metabolic conditioning, um, but whatever you want to call it, it basically means taking your strength and being able to, uh, to repeat a task over and over and over again. That's what it means in your real life, right? So if you're gardening, um, you know, let's say in your backyard you're doing mulch, right? And pushing a wheelbarrow with 100 pounds of mulch in it is, let's say you can't do it. Well, that sucks. You need to get stronger. But even once you have some strength, you need to train to be able to, uh, to, to express that strength over time so you can push that wheelbarrow over, dump the mulch out, right? Go back, get another 100-pound wheelbarrow, push it back and forth. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here, right? Some sort of cardio, some sort of endurance training. And again, there's um, conventional ways of doing it, like running and cycling. Rowing machines are another one. Um, and again, nothing wrong with those. We just don't have treadmills here. We don't have rowing machines here. We don't have spin cycles here. Um, so we use ropes and sleds and again crawling and some other modalities to, uh, to kind of get that same outcome. But the, the moral of the story is this is what we're looking to do, okay? We're looking to get you feeling better and looking better. We're looking to do that by giving you greater mobility, more strength, and more endurance. How we do it is probably the least <laughs> important uh, factor in the equation, right? Just like if you're going to go get a new home built, you're worried about if that home builder is going to build you a house with a strong foundation that looks good and meets all your needs. You're not worried about if he uses uh, a pneumatic air hammer or an electric hammer or whatever, right? You don't care. All you care is about the house in the long run, right? You want the house so you can have a, a shelter for your family, right? So a good shelter for your family is going to have, you know, good store windows and a strong solid foundation. Whether they build it with, you know, a hammer or, or whatever, it doesn't matter. That's the least of your worries. That's kind of what we're getting at here. Start with the end in mind, train the main characteristics to give you some general fitness. Use whatever tools are best for the job at hand. Use whichever tools you prefer. It really doesn't matter. That's it for now. Any questions, just shoot them on over to me. Thanks.